Hello and welcome to a video presentation on estimating with fractions. Here's what you'll learn. How to estimate sums and differences of fractions and mixed numbers. When an exact answer to a problem isn't required, we can use an estimate. Estimation gets us fairly close to an actual answer. Some words that let you know an estimated answer is acceptable are about, approximately, and of course estimate. Now let's address a common misconception about estimation right up front. Many people believe estimating is figuring out an exact answer and then rounding that exact answer. However, it's just the opposite. What you want to do is round the fractions you will be adding or subtracting to get your estimated answer. You see, if it was easy to determine an exact answer with the original fractions, we'd have no need to find an estimated answer. Now, let's use a number line to demonstrate the concept of estimating with fractions. Since fractions are portions of a whole, let's show the number line from 0 to 1. And let's break the interval up into tenths. And let's go ahead and put the appropriate fraction above each of those marks, all the way from 0 over 10 on the left to 10 over 10 on the right. Now, directly between 0 and 1 is 5 over 10, which is 1 half. And that's going to be important, because when we estimate with fractions, we round the fraction to either 0, 1 half, or 1, because it's easier to work with those numbers. So, we will consider the fractions closer to 0 as 0. We will consider the fractions closer to 1 half as 1 half. And finally, we will consider the fractions closer to 1 as 1. Looking at it another way, if the number in the numerator is very small compared to the number in the denominator, we will consider the fraction to be 0. If the number in the numerator is about half of the number in the denominator, we will consider that fraction to be 1 half. If the number in the numerator is very close to being the same as the number in the denominator, we will consider that fraction to be 1. Now, let's try rounding some fractions. Remember, we're going to round our fractions to either 0, 1 half, or 1. Let's start with 2 fifths. For the fraction above, 0 would be written as 0 over 5. 1 half would be written as 2 and a half over 5, because 2 and a half is 1 half of 5. And 1 would be written as 5 over 5. Now, compare the numerator in the fraction above, the 2, with the numerators below. And tell me, which numerator is closest to 2? It would be 2 and a half. That means we would round 2 fifths to 1 half. Let's try rounding another fraction. Remember, we're going to round the fractions to either 0, 1 half, or 1. Take a look at 3 over 26. For that fraction, 0 would be written as 0 over 26. 1 half would be written as 13 over 26, because 13 is half of 26. And finally, 1 would be written as 26 over 26. Now, let's compare the numerator 3 in the fraction above with the numerators below. And tell me again, which numerator is closest to 3? That would be the 0. So we would round 3 over 26 to 0. Now let's try rounding one more fraction. Remember, we're going to round to either 0, 1 half, or 1. Let's look at 32 over 37. For that fraction, 0 would be written as 0 over 37. 1 half would be written as 18 and a half over 37, because 18 and a half is half of 37. 
and finally 1 would be written as 37 over 37. So again, compare our numerator in the fraction above, 32, with the numerators below. And answer the question, which numerator is closest to 32? This time it's 37, so we would round 32 over 37 to 1. Now, it's pretty easy, isn't it? And I want to look at a couple of fractions that are special cases. Estimates for 1 quarter and 3 quarters are unique. Let's start with 1 quarter. For that fraction, 0 would be written as 0 over 4. 1 half would be written, of course, as 2 over 4. And 1 would be written as 4 over 4. Now again, let's compare the numerator 1 in our fraction above with the numerators below, and we're going to ask the same question. Which numerator is closest to 1? Ah, as it turns out, both 0 and 2 are the same distance from 1. Now what that means is you can use either 0 or 1 half in your estimate, depending on which estimate works best for the problem you're solving. So 1 quarter could either be 0 or 1 half. Now let's look at 3 quarters. For that fraction, 0 will be written as 0 over 4. 1 half would be 2 over 4. And finally, 1 would be written as 4 over 4. Now again, compare the numerator 3 with the numerators below. And which numerator is closest to 3? Well, again, as it turns out, both 2 and 4 are the same distance from 3. So you can use either 1 half or 1, depending on which estimate works best for the problem you're solving. So 3 quarters can either be 1 half or you can use 1. Now let's work some examples of estimating with fractions. Let's estimate 7 ninths plus 2 thirds. First, let's write down the problem. 7 ninths plus 2 thirds. Taking a look at the first fraction, the number in the numerator, the 7, is very close to the number in the denominator, the 9. So we're going to round that fraction to 1. So we'll replace 7 ninths with 1. Now let's consider the second fraction. Half of 3 is 1 and a half, and that's very close to our numerator of 2. So we're going to round that fraction to 1 half. Estimating makes adding our fractions together very easy. 1 and a half, or 1.5, is close to our actual answer of 1.27 repeating. So our answer is one and a half as an estimate. Now let's estimate 13 over 28 minus 7 over 8. Again, let's write down the problem. 13 over 28 minus 7 over 8. And taking a look at the first fraction, the number in the numerator 13. Turns out that's about half of the number in the denominator, the 28. So we're going to round that fraction to 1 half. Now let's consider the second fraction. The number in the numerator 7 is very close to the number in the denominator, the 8. So we're going to round that fraction to 1. Now we just subtract. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. So that's the answer for our estimate. Let's estimate with mixed numbers. I have 3 and 1 quarter plus 6 and 3 fortieths. Let's write down the problem to start. 3 and 1 quarter plus 6 and 3 fortieths. Now, looking at the first mixed number, we have 3 and a quarter, which we can also write as 3 plus a quarter. 
Now, one quarter is one of our special cases. Remember, we can round it to zero or one half, whichever works best for our problem. Now, I prefer not having any fractions at all in my estimates, so I'm going to call one quarter zero in this case. So let's replace one quarter with zero. Then we have three plus zero, which is just three. Now, looking at the second mixed number, we have six and three fortieths which we can also write as 6 plus 3 fortieths. In the fraction portion, 3 is very small compared to 40. So I'm going to round 3 fortieths to 0. Then what we have is 6 plus 0. I'm going to replace 3 fortieths with a 0, add 6 and 0 together, and that gives me 6. Finally, our estimate is 3 plus 6, which is 9. Let's wrap up this presentation now with a word problem. Standing 8 and 11 twelfths feet tall, American Robert Wadlow was verified as the tallest person who ever lived. The average human male in the United States stands about 5 and 5 sixths feet tall. About how much taller is Mr. Wadlow than the average United States male? Well, first, we need an expression to solve. Since we're looking for the difference between two numbers, our expression will be a subtraction problem. We find differences by taking the larger number, 8 and 11 twelfths, and subtracting the smaller number, 5 and 5 sixths. Now, looking at the first number, we have 8 and 11 twelfths, which we can also write as 8 plus 11 twelfths. In the fraction portion, 11 is very close to 12. So that means I'm going to round 11 twelfths to 1. And when I replace 11 twelfths with 1, I now have 8 plus 1, which estimates to 9. Now looking at the second number, we have 5 and 5 sixths, which we can also write as 5 plus 5 sixths. In the fraction portion, 5 is very close to 6. So I'm going to round 5 sixths to 1 as well. I replace 5 sixths with a 1, and then we have 5 plus 1, which is 6. And of course, we have a subtraction problem, so we're going to subtra subtract those two numbers. 9 minus 6 gives us 3. That means Mr. Wadlow is about 3 feet taller than your average United States male. Congratulations! You've learned how to estimate sums and differences of fractions and mixed numbers.